we're going to talk about how to convert rectangular equations to polar equations. These are, um, we're going to first try to keep in mind that our goal here when we're going to polar is to try to get something like r equals and then what follows is all thetas. But it's not 100% of the time. Sometimes Sometimes, as we'll see, it won't work out where we just get R by itself, but we might get, uh, say, R squared equals something to do with thetas in it. And still other times, it may not be, the R's may disappear altogether, and we get something like theta equals whatever. So one of the things that makes this difficult is it doesn't always go the same. So you have to kind of get some practice and get some experience and uh, there's just no shortcut around that. So at any rate, here's our equation. We've got a y is equal to uh, square root of 3 times x. So our conversions so um, the way we convert, and let's take a look at our kind of generic triangle drawn here in quadrant one, and there's the angle theta. R is that distance from the pole to the point, and this would be x, and this is going to be y right here. So when we have x's and y's, we're trying to get to r's and thetas. So we can see that from what we know from our trig is that the cosine of theta is going to be x over r. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. And solving for x, we get then that x is equal to r cosine theta. So we're going to come back to this in a moment and we're going to replace that x by r cosine theta. Likewise, we know that sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is y over r, which means that y is going to equal r sine theta. So we're going to replace the y in this equation by r sine theta. So let's see what that looks like. The y here we're going to replace with r sine theta. The square root of 3 stays as it was and the x is going to get replaced by r cosine theta. So we are now into r's and thetas, and our goal, at least at first, is to try to get r by itself and just the theta on the other side. The problem here is that uh, if we divide by r here, it's going to disappear altogether. So that's okay. We're going to live with that. So this is going to become sine theta, is equal to square root of 3 times cosine theta. So this is going to be one of those that's unusual. We're not going to be able to get r by itself because the r has disappeared. So what we'll do next is we're going to divide the cosine to the other side and get that sine theta over cosine theta is going to equal the square root of 3. And now what we're going to try to do here is, since we can't solve for r because the r's are gone, we're going to try to solve for theta instead. So we recognize, hopefully, that sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta is equal to the square root of 3. And that means solving for theta, we're going to get theta is the inverse tangent of the square root of 3. So this is actually a value that we know. So there's a couple of ways to do the inverse tangent of square root of 3. One is if we really know uh, our values well, and we know that since uh, sine, tangent is sine over cosine, if you can recognize that square root of 3 comes from square root of 3 over 2 over a half, <coughs> excuse me, then we could say that the same angle that makes sine theta square root of 3 over 2 also makes cosine theta 1 half, and that's going to be the angle that's going to make tangent theta equal to square root of 3. So that means if we think that sine theta is square root of 3 over 2, that's going to mean that theta is pi over 3, and the cosine of pi over 3 is also a half. 
Now, some people can make that jump pretty well, and that's great. If that is too big a challenge for you, then then uh, there's an alternative way of doing that. If we uh, come to take our tangent theta equals square root of 3, and we draw a triangle and put it in quadrant 1, this is the angle theta we're looking for, and tangent is square root of 3, which is opposite over adjacent. We can use Pythagorean theorem. Square root of 3 squared is 3. Square root of 1 squared is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. That makes the hypotenuse 2. And now we can get to kind of the same place we were, only maybe in a little bit understandable way. We can see now the sign of this same angle that's making tangent square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 and then hopefully recognize that's how we get to the angle theta equals pi over 3. This becomes our polar equation and so we have converted an equation that started out in rectangular form here that had the y's and x's and we have converted it now to something that doesn't have x's and y's but does have r's and or thetas. So there's one example. Let me do another one. So I'm going up a new page here and this time we're going to start with something that's pretty crazy. It's going to be x squared plus y squared plus, plus 3x and we'll say minus 4y is equal to 0. And again, our goal is to convert this into a polar equation, which means it's going to have r's and thetas, but not have uh, x's and y's. So again, what we're using is the fact that we know that x is our cosine, our cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. So I'm going to do this the long way first, and then we'll talk about how we can maybe shortcut it. So if we replace the x's and y's by their r cosine theta and r sine theta, we'll get r cosine theta, that's going to be squared, plus the r sine theta, and that's going to be squared, plus 3 times r cosine theta, minus 4 times r sine theta, and that's equal to 0. So here on the squared terms, when two things are being multiplied and then squared, each one of those gets squared. So I'm going to write that as r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta, and then I'm just going to be patient and wait for a moment with this r cosine theta minus the 4r sine theta, still equal to 0. Looking just at these terms right here, we can see that they, uh, they both have r squared in them. So if I factor the r squared just out of those two terms, it's going to leave behind our favorite trig identity. There's the, r, the cosine squared plus sine squared. The rest is just going to wait its turn here. I'm not ready for that yet. And I'm struggling getting this to write correctly. So r cosine theta minus 4 r sine theta still equals 0. So here the, the cosine squared plus sine squared theta is just equal to 1. And 1 times r squared is r squared. So we have simplified that a bit, and we're ready next to deal with the rest of this. So if we, we can see we've got all these r's, and I'm going to get the r squared by itself first. So in the order that we do these in isn't critical. I'm going to move the other stuff to the right side, so that's now going to be a negative 3r cosine theta and a plus 4r sine theta. We can divide through by the r, and we'll get r is equal to 
a negative 3 cosine theta plus 4 sine theta. And so we have actually done what it is we wanted to do. This is our, our polar equation for, and I don't know if you recognize the original up here, that was actually, looked like it was going to be a circle. And so what we get is this r equals negative 3 cosine theta plus 4 sine theta. Let me give you another example. So I'm going to start with a new screen here, and let's do this time. We're going to start with uh, 4xy is equal to 1, and again, we're going to try to convert that to a polar. So uh, doing like we did before, we're going to replace the x and y by the r cosine theta for x and the r sine theta for the y, and that's going to be equal to 1 there. So here we can, if we multiply that out, the two r's multiply each other and make that an r squared, we've got cosine theta, sine theta, and still equal to 1. Our goal generally is to get r by itself. In this case, we're going to kind of do this in stages. I'm going to, well, I can divide by all of that stuff. I guess I'll do it all at once, and then I'm going to split it up a little bit. So that's going to be 4 cosine theta, sine theta, all in the denominator. Now, we could square root both sides, but that's really just going to make a mess of things. So this is another one of those where we're just going to stop and not square root it. However, what we can do is pull apart this fraction and think of that as 1 over 4 times 1 over cosine theta times 1 over sine theta. And then, if we are okay recognizing that, I'll leave the 1 fourth as 1 fourth. The 1 over cosine theta we can call in a better form is secant theta, and the 1 over sine theta is going to be cosecant theta. And we'll stop there because square rooting it really isn't going to do anything for us. And that is going to be our polar equation. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to go and convert to, uh, instead of going rectangular to polar, we're going to go from polar to rectangular form. So these two are going to be challenging. In general, our goal is to get uh, that y is equal to f of x. So we'd like to get y by itself with all x's on the other side of the equal sign from y. But sometimes that's not going to work. Sometimes, as we've seen, we might get x equals a number where that's going to be a vertical line. Or sometimes we might get something that's more identifiable as, you know, something like, you know, x squared plus y squared equals 25, which is a circle, which we would leave in this form rather than trying to uh, convert that into y equals something. So there's, again, going to be a little bit of an art to doing this. And I think that's part of what adds to the complication here. Now, in, in our conversions from polar to rectangular, we're going to go back to our right triangle here. Well, there's theta, x, y, and r. And here we want to be able to replace the r's and the thetas by something to do with uh, <coughs> x's and y's. So from Pythagorean theorem, we know that x squared plus y squared is going to be the hypotenuse squared. And so if we square root both sides, it gives us a conversion for r r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. If you look also at theta, x, and y, you can see that the trig function that connects those is that tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, and so tangent theta is y over x, which means when we solve for theta, that theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. So these, in general, are going to be our conversions that we're going to use when we're solving and trying to change from polar to rectangular. So back to the equation at hand, the r equals 4. We can replace that r 
by its conversion, the square root of x squared plus y squared, and that's equal to 4. That's not the form we want, so we can square both sides and get that x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. Now, in general, we want to solve for y, but in this case, we can recognize this is in the form. Oops, let me try that again. I uh, obliterated my earlier one here. But what we can do is if we recognize that uh, this is in that form, we can stop right here and just see that is actually a circle uh, centered at the origin with radius 4, and we're good to go. Uh, let me show you one that's a little bit different. So here again, we're going to convert into uh, rectangular. So we have this time r is equal to a negative 2, negative, struggling here, negative 2 cosecant theta, and we're going to convert that into a rectangular form equation. So again, using our conversions, uh, in this case, I'm not going to, because I've done this before, this is again where the art of this comes in, if we recognize that cosecant is 1 over sine of theta, then what we can do is multiply both sides by sine theta. So if you can imagine here, we're going to multiply through by sine theta. It's going to cancel with the 1 over sine theta and leave just negative 2. And on the other side, what we're going to get is r sine theta. And if you remember from before, uh, some of our conversions, one was that r sine theta is equal to y. The other one was r cosine theta is equal to x. So this r sine theta is indeed just y. And so our equation in rectangular form is y equals negative 2. You may recognize that as being just a horizontal line through negative 2. Let me do another example. And this one I'm going to start as uh, theta is equal to pi over 3. <clears throat> now, if you remember our conversion, we said that uh, for theta, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. So we're going to use that and trade in that theta for an inverse tangent of y over x equal to pi over 3. Our goal here, if we can, is going to get y equal to itself, y equal to stuff with x in it, y equals some function of x. So to get rid of the tangent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tangent of both sides of this equation. I'm going to have to squeeze it in here. So I'm taking the tangent of both sides. So the tangent of an inverse tangent, that is just going to cancel each other out. That's like f of f inverse of x. And then the tangent of pi over 3, we know, is sine pi over 3 over cosine pi over 3, which we're supposed to know. And sine pi over 3 is actually the square root of 3 over 2. And cosine of pi over 3 is a half. And so that square root of 3 over 2 divided by a half is multiplying by 2 is going to get us to the square root of 3. So that brings us to y over x equals the square root of 3. And if we multiply that x to the other side, I guess I ended up doing the same one we converted the other way. This is going to be our rectangular equation. These are tough. You just have to get lots of practice. And when you get stuck, have somebody explain to you how to figure that one out.